Gentlemen, start your engine. The 1994 Champion 300 at Charlotte Motor Speedway was getting ready to resume after an early crash involving Tim Bender when all heck broke loose on the restart. The car stacked up going three and four wide even before making it to the start finish line, which resulted in multiple violent hits, the biggest going to Chad Little. Tracy Leslie and Bobby Labonte, who were also involved in the crash, quickly went to check on Little, who had yet to climb from his battered car. Safety workers eventually helped Little try to get out, but he was visibly in an incredible amount of pain. He then tried to walk away from his car, but soon collapsed onto the ground before being loaded into an ambulance and driven to the infield care center. He was diagnosed with a broken right leg, a concussion, and two broken bones in his right shoulder. Little arrived at Dover the following weekend for the next race on the schedule, but didn't plan to run the entire event. Winston Cup Series driver Derek Cope qualified the car third for Little. Little, of course, had to move to the back of the field since he didn't qualify the car himself, but his goal was to run 25 to 30 laps, but said as soon as any cars got near him, he'd enter the pits and let Cope take over. Cope said before the race that he knew how it was not fun to drive hurt and that he was more than willing to help out his friends so that he didn't have to suffer through the pain. It took three laps for the team to have to decide what to do as the caution came out early for a spin involving the number 35 car of Randy Porter. They decided to put Cope in the car despite being so early on as Little climbed out of the car and Cope took over. Little said the biggest problem had to do with his seatbelts. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, I tell you, the worst thing is I, ca I can't physically tighten my seatbelts very tight without it hurting my shoulder, and uh, I just can't drive a car without having my belts tight, you know. And I feel so lucky after last week looking at the car and, you know, seeing what's happened to other drivers with cars look like that. So, I mean, I'm pr I feel fortunate that I didn't get hurt any worse, and I just couldn't race unless I can snug my belts down, and my shoulder won't allow me to do that. So, you know, that caution helped us out. We only lost one lap, and um, so, I mean, this is, all right, we're sitting pretty good. Cope had a rather uneventful day, bringing the car home 17th, which dropped Little from 9th to 10th in the season standings. Little was still undoubtedly in some pain the following week at Myrtle Beach, so he tapped Michael Waltrip's Winston Cup Series spotter, Jeff Green, to help him out that weekend. Green did all the practice sessions, setting up the car to his liking, and then qualified the car 12th. The future Bush Series champion had yet to secure a full-time ride in the series up until that point, but a third-place run at Bristol a few weeks earlier helped put himself on the map, and his substitute performance for Little made sure of that. Green and Little made the switch about 25 laps into the event without losing a lap while the race was under caution. At the same time, Tom Peck took over the number 8 for Bobby Dodder, who broke his shoulder in a crash the week before at Dover. These two substitute drivers turned out to be the stars of the race as they made their way back up through the field on the short track as Green grabbed a 5th place finish for Little and Peck got Dodder a 7th. Two weeks later, the series arrived at Watkins Glen for the Phase 150 and Little was healed up enough to run the entire event. Dodder, on the other hand, was not. He had road racing ace Scott Legacy standing by for him. Legacy took over for Dodder early on while the race stayed green. The two quickly made the switch in the pits and returned to the track. Just as relief drivers were the story of the race the previous week, it was more of the same at Watkins Glen. Legacy wheeled his way all the way up through the field, coming home with an incredible second place finish after passing Tracy Leslie on the final lap. Also of note, Peck, who was driving the number 51 car this week, handed his car over to Winston Cup Series driver Brett Bodine at the same time of the daughter Legacy switch. The number 51 car came home 22nd. The following race at Milwaukee saw Dodder healthy enough to run the entire event, starting 35th and finishing 19th. Another quick little note on that race in Milwaukee. Scott Hansen, who eventually went on to drive Ken Schrader's truck in 1999, qualified Schrader's Bush Series car for him at Milwaukee. Schrader was in Daytona for the Pepsi 400, so Hansen hopped behind the wheel and qualified the number 52 Kodiak car third. Schrader eventually came home with a 23rd place finish. Fast forward to the following season to the Humminbird Fish Finder 500K at Talladega, which I feel like is one of the most 90s NASCAR race names of all time. A lap 11 crash saw 15 cars involved and left Ward Burton upside down before climbing from his car unharmed. Two of the drivers involved in that crash were the number 6 of veteran driver Tommy Houston and the number 64 of Randy LaJoy. 
About 30 laps later, Houston brought his battered number 6 car to the pits and climbed from the car overcome by heat and fumes thanks to damage from the crush panel. Tommy's son Scott, who was the crew chief on the car, ran to look for relief help. LaJoy, whose day ended early with that earlier incident, hopped in the car for Houston at this point. LaJoy was battling for a top 10 finish with just under 10 laps to go when the number 47 car of Jeff Buller spun in front of the field, collecting LaJoy and sending him tumbling through the grass. Thankfully, LaJoy climbed from his car unharmed, but unfortunately the same could not be said for Robbie Riser. The number 17 car of Riser hit the outside wall, caught air off of Fuller, and slammed into the infield pit wall before flying through the infield before coming to a stop. The safety workers quickly worked to get Riser from his car, who was then transferred to Caraway Methodist Medical Center in Birmingham, Alabama. He was diagnosed with a closed head injury, and doctors said he was conscious as he was being pulled from his race car, but became more disoriented as he arrived at the hospital. They put him on a ventilator as a precaution. In what seemed perfectly fitting to an insanely wild race, pace car driver Elmo Langley ran over debris while the race was under caution for that big incident and blew a tire. The car had to be towed away. The race eventually resumed for one lap and the shootout was won by Chad Little. The Winston Cup Series had a little taste of some heat drove wood action the following day during the Die Hard 500 at Talladega. Jeff Bodine was feeling under the weather and went to a local hospital after qualifying on Friday. He was then diagnosed with a kidney stone. He wasn't admitted to the hospital and even practiced his car on Saturday a little bit at the track. He tabbed Mike McLaughlin to help out and practiced the number 7 Xide Ford a little bit during happy hour. He had him on standby for the race on Sunday, but Bodine toughed it out the entire race and finished 24th, eventually having surgery to remove the stones on Tuesday. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already to be the first to know when we drop a new video.